Okay, I'm going to call the order. I'm going to schedule a city council meeting on the 17th of March. If you all please rise. Chief Pesiak, would you lead us in the pledge of Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Council Agency of Voting Member Report. Here. Council Agency of Voting Member Dealer. Here. Council Agency of Voting Member Warren. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Vice Chair Chris Van Dam. Here. And Mayor Chair Michelle. Here. Okay, we're going to have a presentation from the Orange County Department. Ready, it's been full. <laughs> okay, we'll let you off the hook to that. Perfect. All right, consent calendar law items will be taken to just one motion. Has anybody asked to have anything pulled? Any staff, any public, anybody? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have none. Okay, then nobody wants to talk about any items, right? Not that I'm aware of, no, sir. Motion? Okay, roll call, please. Okay, motion by Mayor Post and Vice Chairperson Dan, second by Council Agency of Voting Member Taylor. I'll now proceed with roll call vote. Council Agency of Voting Member Board. Yes. Council Agency of Voting Member Taylor. Yes. Council Agency of Voting Member Warren. Yes. Mayor Post and Vice Chairperson Dan. Yes. And Mayor Chairman Chopper. Yes. Okay, we're moving on to no public hearings. Uh, we're going to do item 8A. <clears throat> this is the second reading of ordinance of any California public employees with compensation contract with the city of Stanton with the approval of ordinance 1129. Mayor, that would be me. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council members. Before you, we have this evening, we have the second read for approval of ordinance number 1129. This ordinance was introduced at the regular city council meeting on February 14, 2023. The City Council is asked to hold a second reading of Ordinance Number 1129 to amend the California Public Employee Retirement System contract with the City of Stanton. The recommended action this evening is that this clerk read Ordinance Number 1129, entitled An Ordinance of the City Council of the City of Stanton, authorizing an amendment to the contract between the City Council of the City of Stanton and the Board of Administration of the California Public Employee Retirement System to remove the contract provision, excluding from CalPERS membership. Persons compensated on an hourly basis, prospectively pursuant to government code sections 20305 and 20503. And the City Council is also recommended to adopt ordinance number 1129. That concludes staff report. Here to answer any questions that you may have. We have a question? Okay, is there a motion to adopt ordinance 1129? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. Okay, we have a first and second. Please call the roll. Mayor, we have a motion by Councilmember Torres, a second by Mayor Pro Tem Dan. I will now proceed with the roll call vote. Councilmember Torres? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Councilmember Warren? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Dan? Yes. And Mayor Shelter? Thank you. Okay, our new business is 9A, which is just like a budget workshop. I bet that's you. Good evening, honorable mayor and members of the council. To ensure proper time and attention is allocated for the city's budget <coughs> workshop, staff is requesting the council consider a date for the fiscal year 2023-24 budget workshop, separate from an existing council meeting date. Staff is proposing either Tuesday, May 16th or Tuesday, May 30th as viable dates. If neither of these times work, staff requests the council select an alternative date this evening. That concludes my staff report and staff is ready to take direction. 
Has everybody responded to the possible dates? I have. No, nobody has responded. So I was hoping you, oops, you can all check your calendars at the diet and let us know which date is preferred. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me. You're, you're the busy one, so you decide. The other one's the 30th? Yeah, either the people. Where do we have, where's this on the agenda? Can we just go? Oh, okay, why don't we just go ahead and proceed it, and we'll get the, get the information to her tomorrow when it's acceptable for the number of people. All right, so we'll go ahead and take her, or do you want to go ahead and take her? We'll stop all the way through, actually, on this also. You'll each send me your available on the week for each of those. Is there a motion for that? Thank you. Roll call. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, please. All right, we're going to go on to 9 <clears throat> This is a resolution to, uh, terminating the local emergency declared by the city of Stanford as a result of COVID 19. As you uh, please speak. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, as of February 28th, the governor ended California state of emergency. Um, and so the city decided to the Florida Council to follow the suit. Uh, there would be no continued fiscal impact. Uh, the only change would be, you know, um, notifying the, the diners or any restaurants that had any health concerns that, that the local emergency was ending. Um, so this is any questions? I would like to make a recommendation that if we're going to do that, that we give them an opportunity to be notified and we also give them a chance for a second notification and give them some time to make an adjustment in their business. Um, what do you think is fair? 90 days? It took us that long to establish. What do you think? Well, the, the various resolutions that the city already enacted during the emergency contemplated that, you know, after the emergency ended, they would have two weeks to kind of close up. Um, and so certainly this council could provide more time um, if they so desire. I think it's a little bit easier to set something like that up than to change your hours or your accommodations for your customers. Um, I mean, to me, I think we think probably 30 days would be the max I'd be comfortable with unless somebody wants to do less. What do you guys think? Is it set up for two weeks? 14 days, that's correct. Why don't we just do the 14 days? Yeah. Do we have any businesses right now actively doing uh, outdoor dining on the sidewalk or parking area? Everybody. I'll end up to that in one of them. Very good. So, so uh, as a department, we were asked to address this some months ago, and the vast majority of the outdoor dining has uh, ceased to occur. Uh, there is, um, my understanding, I believe two establishments that they were encouraged to uh, turn in their plans to our uh, wellness services department to see if they could make their operation of a more permanent nature. But all of the temporary dining associated with the COVID time period is done. Yeah, but we do have a lot of people that are outside outdoor dining that are new that probably didn't even go through the process with the city. Uh, there's a lot of people that do it that we're probably unaware of. And a lot of it looks like they're doing it, but they shouldn't be doing it. So how long do you think it would take you? I think 14 days. We can do, we can do another review of the situation. Um, the last time we did re review it, there was only, I believe, we one or two, and they indicated they wanted to go through the process to make whatever their situation was permanent. But the, the vast majority of the outdoor dining has been addressed at this point. And they were all given, no fines were issued. They were given a warning and then given instruction if they wanted to proceed down a route that would lead to permanent outdoor dining to contact development services. Okay, you want to go with your motion, please? Yeah, I find that's all right. I'll second that. Okay, roll call. 
put a motion by Mayor Brooks and Dan, second by Councilmember Warren. I'll now proceed with the roll call vote. Councilmember Torres? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Councilmember Warren? Yes. Mayor Brooks and Dan? Yes. And Mayor Shaw? Yes. Okay, we're now on number 10. At this time, we'll have oral communications. Any member from the public may address this council, uh, agency, housing authority, or any subject matter within our jurisdiction. Provided that no action will be taken on non agenda items, uh, we'll allow you up to three minutes. And we have our first person, uh, Clarissa. Come on up, please. Yeah, you just have to get a little bit closer to the Perfect. Thank you. My best of all, my notes. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council. My name is Clarissa Surface. I'm the Public Affairs Manager for SoCal Gas. I'm serving as the current liaison on behalf um, of uh, Emily Grash, who's uh, been promoted and spearheading our community outreach efforts for Angela Plank. So I will be your new Public Affairs representative at this time. Um, so I'm here this evening actually to provide an update on uh, the price of natural gas, which has been historically higher in recent months. And I want to share that market prices for natural gas continue to drop, driving a more than 80% decrease in March of sales as compared to January. Now, SoCal Gas does not set the price for natural gas. Instead, natural gas prices are determined by regional and national markets. Now, we buy in gas in those markets on behalf of residential and small business customers. And the cost of buying that gas is filled with no markup, meaning SoCal Gas does not profit from the movement of gas commodity prices. Now, recently, the California Public Utilities Commission approved the acceleration of the California Climate Credit, so customers should have received a credit of approximately $50 either on their February or their March bill. SoCal Gas is also delaying collection activities of, on overdue residential accounts and will not disconnect overdue customers until further notice. We have also paused all non-residential collection field activities. We continue to inform and offer several ways to help income qualified customers through our bill and home improvement pro assistance programs, bill forgiveness plans, and the level pay program. SoCal Gas recently announced $10 million in shareholder funding to provide additional relief to low income customers, <coughs> families, seniors, and small restaurant owners impacted by the natural gas market prices. Now, of the $10 million, $5 million will go towards our gas assistance fund. This is a program administered by the United Way to provide one-time grants to income qualified customers to help pay their natural gas bills. And this contribution will help the gas assistance fund essentially reach more customers with larger grants. Four million dollars will also go towards our, the relaunch, I should say, of fueling our community. This is a collaborative program with local food banks and nonprofit organizations to provide free meals and groceries to thousands of Californians facing food insecurity. And lastly, $1 million will go towards our Restaurant Care Resilience Fund. This will target small restaurants to help with improvements, upgrades, employee retentions, and rising costs. And for more information about any of these programs, customers can visit SoCalGas.com forward slash newsroom. And lastly, we'd like to encourage our customers to continue to reduce their energy bills by doing a few simple tips. Lowering the thermostat 3 to 5 degrees helps permitting. Wash clothes in cold water, reduce the temperature on the water heater to 120 degrees, and limit the use of non-essential natural gas appliances such as fireplaces, spas, and cold heaters. And so if you are a member of the community, have any questions or concerns, please feel free to use me as a resource, and I will be more than happy to assist you or them directly. I thank you for your time this evening. Are there any questions? All right, Clarissa, if you would leave a copy of that with the us. Absolutely. I'll be happy yeah. to email um, the city manager and the city clerk for more information. Okay, great. We appreciate that. You make a great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to address the city council at this time? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. <coughs> we'll move on to written communications. We have none. Mayor, Chairman, Council, initiated business. Reports and announcements. Okay, so since you're the woodsy, so you get to report on Americana. Oh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I had the pleasure to go to the Americana Awards. It was really fun. I saw um, the mayor, Alice was there. Um, I, got, I had a fun time talking to uh, uh, Carol Warren. Um, it was really nice. We got to see Brian, uh, Brian Donahue receive the award. Uh, 
Everybody was dressed up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great table away from everybody. Oh, oh, you know. for <laughs> <laughs> it was a great scene, but I don't know anybody. By the way, Mayor Mayor Jim <laughs> did a great job um, going out <laughs> and taking the role of bringing wine out. So thank you for that. I also wanted to report on uh, on the tenth. I attended the orange, the first annual Orange County Women Leadership Summit was um, sponsored by several entities, but notably uh, Southern California had this I invited uh, Fiona Ma uh, down from Sacramento, and I, I spoke to her about uh, possibly getting funds to help with relocation and things like that. And she said she was okay with it, but hopefully we can have uh, other sources of funding for numerous projects around the state. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, we'll move on to uh, items for a future meeting. I have one. Okay, um, I'd like to propose a meeting where we could discuss um, bringing the mayor's condition into line with um, the term limits on the council position. And this would be for the future. It wouldn't affect you at all. But it would, have, it would make all five positions in the city uh, under the same term limit. It would have to be, um, we'd have to a vote on it and would have to go to the vote of the uh, public on it uh, in November of 2024. We had plenty of time to talk about it. And it seems like it would be the right thing to do. Let the voters decide. And if they decide no, that's fine. If they decide yes, that's fine. It's good morning, what now? So what's the term limits on the mayor position? Okay, and who's going to vote on it? We vote on it here. It, to send it to um, a vote of the public. So why don't we do that? Why don't we send the vote of the public and we do away with these uh, districts at the same time and we do a general election? <laughs> we haven't talked about that all. I mean, it's time. ridiculous for us to have a city council person represent nine streets. I mean, it's better that I mean, it's better to have a uh, a field of candidates citywide for these five spots. So we can't. I don't think we can do that either. We'll get, we'll yeah, but the actually, we can't do that. Mr. Mayor, Council, unfortunately, since it's not an agenda, I don't think we can't discuss it right now. No. Um, if they put it down. We're not discussing it, we're just arguing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they put it down, we'll discuss it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can do, Mr. Taylor, your item as position, and Mr. Sharp, if you want to add to that. Sure, um, good on there. Okay, I like to agendize uh, the feasibility of uh, moratorium on vendors, street vendors. So we can figure out what's going on. Okay, great. Anybody else? Anything for future study sessions? Okay. Um, well, Pete, that's you. Yeah. yeah um, just a couple of meetings ago, I brought up if you look at the park over here, that's Southern California Edison land, and they allow different people to rent the land and so we've had a park there for years and years and years and we've really utilized that park quite well. There is more Edison land on the far side of Dale and it's available and I thought we should grab it. The, the rent is minimal. I think, I think we should grab that land and develop it when we can. Because that area of Stan has no parks, and Stan's already right <laughs> under where we should be for parks to begin with. So I think it's min minimal expense. Um, we can take it as it comes as far as what we do to develop it. But I, I, I think it's a, a good good thing for Stan. So I'd like to direct staff to look into it further and see if we can nail down a rental lease with um, Southern California Edison. It goes at an angle. <coughs> so, 
Um, yeah. Sorry, I can't get online. Right there on Kitsaw, that's the picket road. 8100 block. Yeah, thank you. Well, the area that's available <coughs> is um, next to Vail. Yeah. Just north of Rancho. Yeah. Oh. Are you talking about the easement on the Kitsaw or just on Vail, please? Not the Kitsaw on Vail going south. It's in that area. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the big giant monster area that we try to get rid of. You know, the problem is is that um <coughs> is that um nobody from our agencies was going to get those calls from them. So I don't know how we get a hold of them. So we want to well, you know, the thing is, is that they had such a changeover in their land management position. So, I believe. Um, places and 
Camel and Harris did that to us <laughs> on our way out. But the good thing that we did was we modeled our post parking program after Anaheim did extensive studies and surveys and everything else. We modeled ours after theirs. But what we did is the parking permit, Anaheim's is per car. So if you have a blue Chevy, that <coughs> permit stays with that blue Chevy. Where Stanton's, we had it to where you can just put it on your blue Chevy, you can put it on your Pontiac, you can move it around. And we were $5 a month cheaper than Anaheim's. So we tried. That's another thing. The thing with parking permit that I have to explain to a lot of residents when they come to me with that issue is, it's voted in by the residents. We don't force anyone to do permit parking. They have, as a community, choose and vote on it. So they can, in the same way, choose to eliminate it. So that's the residents, and they're completely empowered to do that. If they decide the vast majority of us hate parking, permit parking, then they can vote, gather together and vote and say, we'll get rid of it. So it's really not up to us to decide who gets parking and who doesn't get permit parking. It's really the residents. But maybe they're not clear about the process, they feel like it's just for those two. So I wonder if, I don't know if our city website explains that process clearly, but um, maybe it's a, 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 a public service announcement needed, yeah, or, or education. Maybe we should be educating the public service. Yeah, yeah. And is this way that the parking, if I recall, the way the parking permit system was designed, it was specific to a particular neighborhood. And we actually color coded the zones of that neighborhood. In order for it to take place in a residential area, it had to be within a particular area. And it was only uh, voted on by the people in that area. And so we really took it out of our hands. We gave the program and made it available to meet the needs of every residential community. And the ones that needed it got it, the ones that didn't want it didn't get it. And so, to be honest with you, I think it's just a matter of if you're having trouble, if they're having trouble with enforcement, that has absolutely nothing to do with the permit. It has nothing to do with our program, but it has to do with the ability for our code enforcement to, uh, to uh, uh, enforce. And the reason it's been really bad is because of COVID and because of transiency, uh, problems with uh, other areas in the city. Uh, dealing with all of those issues to where it really drained our staff time. Now, if we get back to some kind of normalcy, I just hope that we'll be able to do better with our parking enforcement. But I'm going to tell you right now, the people that want it, they're not going to give it up. And the people that want that don't want it, don't want it, I don't want it. So, I mean, it's that's where it's always been. So, I don't think we'll have to spend couple of days but we, I think I think if we refine it to what your your concerns are, it will go a lot smoother. Um, when was the last time that we made any changes or looked at the pool parking system? It was when we had the state mandated <coughs> school pushed down to us to be then have to modify sections of that motion to allow So as soon as the state made this change here, we had to conform the state regulations and then we revamped the whole thing. We actually came up with a better uh, permit and we came up with a better process. Uh, we also did an outreach to the community right on how to get it. We had meetings on it, forums. And we actually had, when we used to have our neighborhood meet and greets where we discussed and explained to them how they could get a parking permit and how they could keep it or how they could get rid of it. So uh, we did a, we spent a lot of time on that thing. I, um, if I may ask, uh, is there any data regarding how aggressively we are doing parking enforcement in the parking permit areas? And is there if perhaps we need to increase uh, that please so that the program is uh, enforced properly? Thank you. Uh, related to the data as far as enforcement in our last completed fiscal year we actually exceeded the revenue project projection in that area by over a hundred thousand dollars um, last week we did a, a very early morning operation where we uh, issued over 60 citations in one day uh, it, it, it is being enforced obviously 
you can't attest to every time someone slows down or parks in a permanent area without permit they're getting a ticket, but it is being uh, robustly enforced as indicated by uh, the numbers there. Uh, that being said, we do receive complaints on both sides. Most of the time we do get complaints. It's from an individual who actually was cited and then goes on a crusade related to those who have not been cited. So um, that's my personal experience with it, but we do we do enforce that plan. But just to clarify, the hundred thousand dollars, we don't profit off of that whatsoever. That just covers our costs. Correct. And it also um Mr. Torres, the thing is is that uh, we as far as uh, proactive, we are more reactive. And I will tell you that anytime somebody calls the city about a parking issue, that is immediately addressed. Um I think that takes up the bulk of our time in most cases. How many areas do we have? Not have no, there's, no one there. there's a page on the website. Yeah. Maybe 10, 12, sounds about right. I thought it was 12 to 14. Okay, the usual point there. Yeah, we probably mentioned that. So that everyone would have a salary. And then moving forward, moving forward, we made a staffing adjustment to take an individual that was working overnight. During daytime hours, with a focus towards the end of their shift on specific enforcement or um, permit for permit. I'm gonna make a recommendation. Um, since since we do have this program in place, and our big thing is enforcement, um, I would like to make a, a, a just a subcommittee uh, with all of them, maybe uh, one other council member to meet with our public safety department and let's go over all that data and then you can report back to the full council to see what we can do maybe to improve our enforcement and answer the questions that your good seniors may have. Is that something that would work for you? Yeah, that sounds good. And if there's any other issues around, let us know. Is there anybody that would maybe like to serve as well? Okay, you got one, you got one, but Okay, so the action of the direction of council will be the form of today of Mr. Torres and Mr. Taylor who's going to take a look at the enforcement concerns and um, at that time also uh, we can uh, review the overall program and where we are with the pandemic break. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we get to go to our esteemed attorney. Thank you, Mayor Councilman. Okay. Just two announcements. A reminder that we're having the FRC groundbreaking this Thursday at 9 a.m. at the FRC, which is 18122 Santa Paula. And we invite anybody who's available for the area to come on out. And of course, once that renovation is complete, we'll have a very big street and opening. Also wanted to remind people that we have our next Talk on the Block scheduled for Wednesday, March 22nd at 3 p.m. at the Guala Car and Mobile Home Park at 7271 Catella Avenue. And that will be noticed at the public meeting closer to the date on the screen. Okay, Chris, this is your pen. So it's a good chance. Hey, we're, we're very happy to hear from you. Go ahead. Good evening, Honorable Mayor. City Council and City Staff. Uh, I'll take a minute. My name is Chris Spiziak. I am the new Division 7 Administrative uh, Captain assigned to Division 7, which serves the City of Stanton here with Chief Doman. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us tonight because he's on his way up to the area to assist with the uh, response to the floods. Uh, I am pleased to provide to you tonight the Orange County Fire Authority report uh, for February of 2023. For the City of Stanton, there was 320 incidents 10 being fires, 290 for EMS or rescues, and 20 were hazardous conditions or other calls for service. In the unincorporated areas of Orange County serviced by Engine 46 and Squad 46, there were 60 incidents, one fire, 57 EMS and rescues, and two hazardous conditions or miscellaneous calls. There was one notable incident on February 18th. Units responded with multiple reports of smoke and fire seen 
at about approximately midnight, 22 hours, arrived on scene at 8300 Chapman Avenue. First crews reported heavy smoke and fire from a two-story apartment building. In all, it took 80 firefighters and to bring the fire under control on those three alarms. Fire investigators were unable to rule out multiple causes of the fire and have narrowed it down to improperly discarded smoking items, small electrical devices, and lithium ion batteries. In all, 10 units were affected by the fire, and those units were those uh, citizens were offered assistance from the Red Cross. Damage was estimated at $2 million to the structure and $500,000 to the contents of the apartments and the residents. Our safety messages for last month there was an emphasis placed on burn safety, home escape plans, and safety in public buildings. For this month, our emphasis is on cooking safety, home heating safety, electrical safety, and household hazardous waste. As a reminder, I'd like to remind everybody that this information can be found on our website at orangeocfa.org, where you can print the safety flyers in multiple languages. As far as current events are going on, OCFA has sent uh, multiple resources and overhead personnel to assist with the winter storm response, most specifically in Tulare County and our local mountains in San Marino County. So far, we've sent a swift water team that consists of 17 firefighters to Tulare County. We've sent a type, type six engine strike team to the San Bernardino Mountains, which consists of 16 firefighters. In addition to that, we've also supplemented with the San Bernardino Mountains two hand crew uh, two hand crews with 36 firefighters. And additionally, we've sent two structure specialists that are civilians that are with our FEMA Urban Search and Rescue California Task Force 5. Additionally, I'd like to thank our council members, staff, and citizens who attended our tremendously successful open house on March 4th. We had approximately 5,000 uh, citizens and uh, participants at that event. Uh, couldn't be successful without the participation of our uh, City Council, staff, and citizens that we serve. Thank you for your time. Any questions? I have a question. Uh, what do we do? Uh, I know we have a great um, fire alarm system that we do throughout the county. What do we do with those um, units after we remove them? Are you specifically referring to the smoke alarms? Uh, the smoke alarms usually are discarded uh, properly. Uh, batteries go in a uh, recycling bin uh, at each of the individual stations and will be discarded in a bulk supply once the bucket's full. As far as the plastics go, it's just discarded safely. What about the, the device itself? The device itself? The device itself, the smoke alarm, it's just taken and placed in the, the recycling bin. Okay. I, um, I'd like to maybe if you reach out back to me, I'll discuss it. Uh, there's radioactive material in those. And if you take that and multiply it by the hundreds and hundreds of thousands that go to the landfill, um, it might be something that OCFA should be aware of, and that maybe we can come up with a solution for uh, taking care of that in the future. Absolutely, I'll report back to you. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, that being said, that was excellent. Dom, do you want to get into this? Anytime. <laughs> Is there any other business? Okay, everybody stay dry and be safe going home. <laughs>